Hello, everyone, and welcome to this FMB webinar on Tuesday, the 16th of March. I hope everyone watching is well, and thank you for joining us today. So the subject for this afternoon is estimating software, how to choose the right tech. And we've got a packed agenda for you today. We've got uh, Joanna Mulgrew from HBXL, who's going to talk about how to select the right software package for your business. Then we've got Andrew and Wayne from Build Aviator, who are going to talk about how to implement and use the software package once you've chosen it. And then we've got one of our members speaking today as well, Rob Clark of Broadfield Construction Northwest Limited, based up in Lancashire, who's going to talk about his journey with um, estimating software and share some of his tips and thoughts about that with you as well. So there's a lot to get through. If um, members attending have any questions during the webinar, please just pop them in the Q&A box that you can see at the bottom of your screen. And we will save those till the end of the presentations and answer them all then. And don't forget, there's no such thing as a stupid question. If you're thinking of a question, there are probably other members thinking the same thing. So please don't hesitate to put your questions in the box as we go through. So before I hand over to Joe, I am just going to ask you a question. So I'm going to ask you how you currently do your estimating. If you could tick one of these boxes, hopefully you can see that um, question on the screen now and just pick whether you are already using a software package, whether you're looking to change it, you don't use software or whether you use a rule of thumb to calculate estimates. So I'll, I'll leave that on the screen for um, 30 seconds or so more to give you a chance to answer it and we'll share the results. Okay, I think almost everyone has voted now. So I'm gonna end that poll and share it on the screen, which is showing that the most popular option is not to use a software package, but using things like Excel spreadsheets. So I'm sure that will be useful for our presenters to know where you're at already with estimating software. Um, I've got a second question for you, if you don't mind, before I hand over to Joe, which is about the reasons for not using software if you're not using it. So if you don't use estimated software, why is that? And you can click more than one option because there may be several of these that apply. So again, I'll give you a moment to read that and answer it. Okay, I think we'll end that poll there and share the results of that on the screen. You should be able to see that there, that the um, the biggest percentage, 64% of members have said that they're not sure that the estimating would be accurate, but others are saying it's too expensive, they don't have time to learn how to use it, or the time just hasn't been right for their business so far. So that's all really useful information for us to have. And I'm now, without further ado, going to hand over to Jo from HBXL to share her presentation. OK, over to you then, Jo. Hi there, everybody. Um, I'll just get this uh, presentation going. Then. So I'm going to share my screen and um, I hope um, that that is popped up for you. Um, you can see it all, Hayley. Is that okay for yeah, you? Absolutely. Okay, lovely. Um, so, yeah, my name is Jo Mulgrew, and um, I am the um, Operations Director here at HBXL Building Software. Um, HBXL Building Software deliver um, estimating software for small builders, um, and my role at HBXL often involves um, choosing software solutions for our business, um, and I've got a few tips um, to help you choose the, uh, the right package um, for you. Um, I'm not going to today, I'm kind of focusing on things like accuracy or um, choosing something bug free, because in my opinion, the right software should, you know, de facto uh, be bug free and accurate um, out, of, out of the box. So we're going to be focusing on some subtler differences um, today. All right. So um, our tip number one um, is suitability. Now, this is going to sound like it's, um, you know, of course, of course, the software's got to be suitable for my business. But you need to think about where your business is today and where you're headed. Um, you don't want to make an investment today and actually it's not going to be right for you uh, next year. So an example would be um, perhaps you're a joinery firm and you want to move into home extensions or maybe you're already in home extensions and you've got aspirations for property developing and, and new build. 
So have a think about what you're doing today and how you're trying to grow your business. Um, the reason that you're choosing estimating software is because there's a challenge in the business and you're probably trying to change it. So have a really good think about what it is you're trying to achieve today, short term, but also further out. Um, often um, a software package that's quite simple and basic might be you know, more suited to perhaps um, a very specific trade. Um, whereas obviously the bigger the project type, um, you know, you're going to get um, a little bit more um, kind of complexity in this solution. So don't go too basic today just because it looks easy and cheap if you've actually got bigger future aspirations. So that'd be my, my first tip. Um, a second tip would be about what do you want to get um, out of the software? Do you want just um, an estimate or would you prefer a quotation? And if you want a quotation for your, for your end client, do you want a, a basic quote or would you prefer uh, you know, a fully detailed quotation, um, which convinces the, um, the customer of your um, kind of experience and your trustworthiness? Or maybe you need um, kind of bill of quants outputs. Um, maybe you're tendering for local authority work and you need outputs that are SMM7 or uh, the, the new rule of measurement um, output. So have a think about that as well. And does the software do that? Um, also think about um, the other kind of business um, helpful reports, you know, so the, the, the forecast, so the profit forecast, your cash flow forecast, the material schedules, um, the labor schedules, what you need and when on site because a good estimating package can give you those kind of reports for free off the back of the estimating data. So you do it once, create your estimate, and you get all this good stuff um, off the back of it. So have a think what else would be helpful um, for your business. Um, so again, it's kind of somewhat obvious, but when you're searching uh, for a solution, you're probably going to be starting on the web. Um, you're going to be uh, Googling um, or, or whatever browser you use. Um, uh, and uh, it is the World Wide Web. You're going to get products from the States or maybe Canada or Australia coming up as well as kind of UK products. Um, some of these other um, software solutions from overseas, they might seem pretty good, but um, does the content meet UK building regulations, you know, for, from a specification perspective? Um, probably the answer is not. Um, is it working in feet and inches um, versus kind of metric? Um, has it got um, different spellings in it? For example, labor in the States, it's, you know, with an O-R. In the UK, it's O-U-R. Um, that might look like a typo in your quotation. If every time you refer to labor, it's got the wrong spelling in it, that might be quite um, annoying. Um, and it's also linked to my tip four, which is about pricing and building materials pricing. Um, Obviously, we're in our own kind of uh, UK bubble of Brexit and COVID at the moment. There's a lot of price inflation here. And you want a solution which is updating you with what the market is doing here at the moment. So um, a good software solution will have updates to the prices. Um, they might be um, average national average prices or it could be merchant specific. And if it's merchant specific, are you restricted to that, to that one merchant or is it open to, um, to, to different um, suppliers? Um, and can you edit the prices within the software? Um, can you change the labor rates to suit uh, your team um, and your setup and the subcontractors that you use? Um, and I guess another point is, um, does it come relatively pre-populated? You might want to edit some of the prices or the rates, but does it, does it come with the good stuff all done for you in the first place to save you having to key in a whole price book um, from scratch uh, yourself? which leads me to another point, which is user friendliness. Um, you need to be able to use the tool um, pretty straightforwardly. Um, I should add that obviously, if you're taking on a tool for your business, um, expect a little bit of a learning curve. I mean, hopefully it shouldn't be a very big learning curve, um, depending on how much you've been using um, you know, software um, before. I mean, a lot of our users are actually quite novice um, computer users, but they're certainly very savvy so far as, you know, they're mobile and searching the web and, and other tools. So, um, you know, but when you're starting with a new software product, it's going to take a little bit of time, especially with the first job or two um, that you're going to be uh, using in the software. So a big tip for me, um, if you're trialing the software, and I would always recommend trialing the software, is to run it on a job or two that you have already, um, you've already completed and you know um, how much the job costs um, at the end of the day and how much money you made on it, how much profit you made on the job. 
Um, another tip there is don't expect necessarily your price and the estimate price from the software to be the same. Uh, we're often um, told, oh, my gosh, I was running a trial job and it's come out more expensive. But when you dig deep, you're actually missing things like um, wasted, theft from site, um, replacement tools, um, inflation on materials and labor. Your overheads often missed on in, in project costings. You've got to apply that in the software and um, should help you um, take account of your overheads. And then you add your profit. So sometimes, actually, with a software solution, you might be surprised that you've been missing out a fair amount um, by using perhaps a rule of thumb um, or maybe an Excel um, spreadsheet that you've developed over time. So um, I've packed in a lot in user friendliness there. <laughs> um, but it should do it in a way that you can um, can get on with and is, is digestible um, and is, is, is for your type of firm, you know, a building firm. Um, all of that said, after you've done your first couple of trial jobs, um, you should start to see time saving um, with the processes of, of estimating. It, sh it should start to make your job easier after you've done your first couple of jobs. Um, a good package will include quite a lot of automation to stop you forgetting things, prompts. Obviously, a lot of people do their quoting you know, later in the day, in the evenings, the weekend, not necessarily the freshest of brain to uh, and, and the time of day to do um, you know, complicated work like estimating. So lots of prompts, lots of templates in the software is what, you're, what, what I would recommend to make sure that you don't miss anything. And that automation should mean less keying in. Um, which also links to the final point there about your estimating software, making your life easier by synchronizing with other programs. For example, can you take off plans by tracing over the plan um, and then feeding it into your estimating software? Off the back of your customer quote, do you get a full, uh, full build program and, and project management tools? Um, or do you get all the health and safety documentation off the back of that job that you just won? Um, do you get a building contract off the back of that estimate um, as well with integrated software that links to your, um, your estimate? So you can get a lot of time saving, not just from the estimating process itself, but from the wider um, out estimate output. Um, a super quick one on reputation. You, know, um, you, can, you can find a lot out on the web, obviously, while Googling through Trustpilot, through Facebook comments, um, through different reviews in, in different magazines. Um, I guess, um, on, a, on a, a company website, the software company sh should have, you know, their, their rewards and that kind of thing you can dig a little bit into. Um, and, you know, do they, do they act on your side um, as a software company? Can you see them actively writing about other things that are happening um, in the marketplace that are going to impact you and impact ultimately your estimates and quoting? Also linked to that, are they listening to their user base? Have they got an active development team responding to those requirements? Um, um, are they thinking about what's going to help you next? Um, you can ask these questions of the, of the team that you're talking to. Um, how quickly are bugs fixed? Are there regular updates? You can find out a lot of that from their um, support websites, um, what, they're, what they're doing and saying. Um, and nearly there. Cost, is it value for money? Value means different things for different people. But for me, when choosing software for my business, it doesn't necessarily mean cheap. Um, cheap can sometimes mean no support. It can sometimes mean over simple. Um, but no, neither do you have to go for a solution that costs you thousands. There are definitely affordable solutions um, that um, are, are out there. Um, think about whether you want an annual subscription. Um, which can make it more affordable, especially if you're just wanting to uh, trial estimating software for the first um, time. Or if you're more sure of it, you might want to purchase the software outright. Um, but bear in mind, if you purchase the software outright, you usually have to have a maintenance contract um, for um, telephone support and updates and so on on top of that. So check for hidden extras um, at the checkout. Um, and finally, um, do check that the price includes um, telephone support. Um, you might see that there's various um, cheaper apps out there, for example, but you don't necessarily get any assistance should you need it. Um, you might be lucky if you get um, email support. So have a look on their website. Do they have a support policy? Because you might be surprised that quite a lot of companies out there, they don't have a support policy. So find out, um, do they have telephone, telephone support? And if they do, is it restricted to a certain number of calls you can make in a, in a month or a year? Um, a lot of companies only restrict it to email only, which is a bit tricky if you've got a quote to get out and you definitely need to speak to somebody. 
do they have videos and training and how long does that support last you? So that's my top tip. I'm sorry I've spoken so quickly, but there's loads to get through. Um, but finally, have a demo. Ask lots of questions of your demonstrator. Um, most software houses do webinars where you can watch it um, of an evening and see, see what the software does and definitely request a free trial. And that's it from me. There's my contact details um, and you can um, speak to our team of demonstrators um, uh, for Estimator Express, which is our software product. So I'll, I'll leave that there, Hayley. Um, Brilliant. That's okay, so I will stop sharing. Thank you, Joe. That was fascinating. I think you're so right about that point about um, using American or Canadian or Australian software because we've had experience of that kind of um, uh, system at the FMB and it causes confusion with dates and yes. addresses as well. Yes, it's so awesome. that can be an issue and you can usually change them, but it isn't always that easy to do. So no, it can be a bit of a fact. Yeah. <laughs> So okay. thanks for all of that. Um, all right, thank you. Just a, a reminder to everybody, we will send out a follow-up email, which will have Joe's contact details in it and copies of the presentation slides as well. Um, so you will get her contact information if you wanted to make any inquiries about the, the um, HBXL product. Um, and don't forget, if you have any questions, you can pop them in the Q&A box as well. So now I'm going to hand over to Andy and Wayne from... Build Aviator. So I will just hand over to you now, Andy. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. So uh, my name is Andrew Ellis. I'm the estimating director at Build Aviator. Um, a lot of the things that we do today will dovetail into what Joe has just been saying. And I'm also here with my uh, um, estimating manager as well, Wayne, who oh, well. all, looks after all our estimators within, within Build Aviator as well. So um, I'll let Wayne start. We'll, we'll bit of banter between us. Uh, we've got both got things to say and, and advice and give a bit of direction on, on what we do and how we do it. And uh, we've both been at both sides of the page on this one. We've both been builders. We've both been using estimating software. We've both used estimating service. So I think that you should get a good overview of, of what we do, how we do it, and, and some good advice on uh, on what what to help your business as well. Thank you. So I, I, I've been thinking, how, how do you best utilise estimated software? There's quite a lot of points to consider, it's quite a big thing. The first one I think you should consider, you need to get the software that you, that you trust. Uh, you trust, get, get familiar with it. Uh, there's no point in yourself having to check every single line you put in. So, you know, you'll agree. Yeah, absolutely, Wayne. And I do think that the... The software should also fill, fill, follow the build process. So, bricky by trade, when we used to price our work up, I think that if you do get some software that, that obviously starts at the foundations and works through the, the job itself, so foundations, ground floor, walls, and actually physically does the estimate as you are doing um, the build, helps you remember things, helps you make sure that you put every little thing in there. Um, like Joe says, in, in programs, it does try and help you with that. But I, I do think, though, there is also a lot to remember to make sure that when you're doing a bespoke job, that you do actually don't get any of those items in there. Um, so, so get a program that will help you along the way and help you remember things as you're actually doing them. You also need to consider the functionality of the program, of the software. Uh, what do you want as an end result? Do you want thousands of pages of reports? Do you want them that are easy to understand? Do you want reports that you're going to hand to your customer? Do you want to stand out from with these reports compared to other uh, builders putting tenders in? Different, different things you need to consider when you, not obviously buying, but when you start using it to utilise what you have for. Absolutely. I think that the report should always represent different sections of work. So you've got your written, written documentation, you've got bills of quantities, even a list of just materials that you may want. It may be that you don't want the labour elements of the project and you are just looking at the materials as well. So the reports must be driven from the information that's been input into the software. And the reports must also reflect the overall cost of what has and has not been, and I must emphasise that has not been included, because 
you must make sure that when you're using the software and you're presenting your reports to your customer, that those reports are a like for like for what the bills are priced for. It's so important. And I think that that is one of the biggest downfalls that we have today. Uh, myself, maybe putting the price in for, for an extension, the guy down the road having another price. And if you price are, are not the same as each other, well, then um, there is going to be things in there. The customer looks at the bottom line to so try and make sure that you are priced like like. And within the reports as well, make sure that you've got the company logos in there, any testimonials, pictures from previous works. Because I think they just go a long way with that. Um, so hopefully the, the actual program that you get is good enough to be able to put those uh, those individual parts of your business into the, to that uh, in, into those actual reports. If you you need to decide, they're not all easy. Uh, you need to decide if you want to invest the time in, in learning the software. Uh, would it be more feasible to pay an estimating service to do the heavy lift for you? Would you then like the software to tweak it once you've done the heavy lift? Uh, it's tricky. It's, it's, it's tricky really to decide if, you, if you're not really used to using them because they do, there is, like Joe said, there's quite a learning curve with the most basic investigating programs. Absolutely, yeah. We do recognise that. There is, like Joe said, but at Wayne, there is programs out there that, that will do just a decking area. There are programs out there that will just do a refurbishment. Is that right for your business? Do you want something that will give you the whole job? If you're doing new builds or just extension block conversions, please try and get, and like Joe says, get a trial of the actual system you're going to get because that will help you decide um, what that system will be able to do, the functionality, and whether that will be able to do just the smaller jobs or the larger jobs. And like Wayne says, there's people out there that let you have the system, but also they, they offer a service as well and the service then passes you back the estimate once the heavy lift's been done, for you then to be able to manipulate it, change your labour rates, your profit margins, and everything that you want to change in there to actually physically get that project to where you need it to be and the price bracket that you want your customer to get it at. I guess so. Uh, Minimise the guesswork. It sounds, not, it sounds awful to say, but an estimate by nature, it, it, it's an approximation, and there'll be areas which you don't know that, you, that, you, that you're never going to know until you start. There's subjective, a lot of subjective elements, depending, and it can differ greatly on project to project. So there are ways to minimise this guesswork. So using a, a flexible program that can accommodate these uh, flexible areas, these variables uh, will reduce them. So, for example, for example, uh, you may cost in the job labour and material. Materials are a variable cost uh, day to day, month to month, merchant to merchant, region to region. You need to be looking at something that takes minimise that by using something that's got up to date material prices in. Uh, they'll have a massive effect on your, on your final costings. You lot, we do all, obviously all over the country. The labour rates vary massively, so you need to be able to be able to put what labour rates in what you want. Specific trade rates would be even better. Uh, they're the they're the things that shouldn't be variable, but are if you're not using the right software. Yeah, yeah. I also think that like like Wayne says about the, the material cost. You need to be able to get a system that will keep those prices up to date. I know for a fact that on the 1st of April, a lot of prices on materials go up 15%. So we, um, in Build Aviator, we build this into our system. So what we do is we have a contingency in there, which we put into the profit margin, but also we try and forecast what these price updates will be, because we all know the price that you do today within an estimate, you're probably not going to start that work in those big forms. So the more you can mitigate those circumstances out and get rid of those actual costs, 
um, vary and make sure that, that your business has covered those costs. Um, is it in, whether it's a contingency or, or you put it in your profit margin. I know that some people put it in as a contingency. And the reason they put it in there is because then it is visible, visible to their clients. They want their clients to know that they put a cost in there for in case of, in case that material goes up, the insulation may go up 10, 15%, the roof tiles may go up 10, 15%, but they don't want the, the customer to have a bill at the end of the job to say, well, I'm sorry uh, that your prices have now gone up because of this. If you, if you tell them that information before you start, then at least then uh, they're ready for that. And, um, and I do think that that, that is a massive, uh, has a massive impact as well on, on like when he says on the actual overall cost of the project. If you can get the prices as near as you possibly can for the materials at that moment in time, then, then you're on a winning start. As well as minimizing the guesswork, you need to minimize the mistakes. We're, we're, all, we're all human. You, you could easily brush, brush against the key, what you didn't mean to brush against. Now, five years ago, uh, we both used scale rules and we thought that was the way for, you know, ridiculous. You learn, learn to use the measuring software. Learn to use the measuring software. If it links to price and cheat, you know, but using, measure, using measuring software. If you spend the time on it, we'll make your estimates more accurate and actually you, you, will, you will get faster, obviously. Yeah, yeah. We we, we, we have used uh, measuring software. I don't know if, if Joe uses that as well. Uh, and their team there, uh, like Wayne says, it was pinpoint accuracy with areas, picture grooves. You can overlay ground floors with first floors to see what wall should be structural on the ground floors to be able to price up in the right way. All these little things... Uh, Add to a project, and the more accurate you can get, obviously the, the less um, the less variable it will be in there. And and, and obviously <laughs> dimensions actually quickly from drawing to input into the data into your software. It is so easy by using these sorts of systems alongside your estimating software to physically do those plans. Yeah. If you are using uh, a company to do the heavy lift for you. Joe again mentioned it, trust pilot and stuff, but try and try and use us, try and use companies who use people who know what they're on about, not just putting measurements in. Try and get a bit of communication with the with the person doing the estimate. So you can discuss the things that you may be not sure about where you may want to uh, put extra money in or access market but rather than just digging a foundation. Uh, so communication is pretty key if you if you're going down that road. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and I can see that, that obviously the driver of the software is important as the software itself. And if the wrong information is put into the system, then the reports will be wrong and not correct and reflect the words that you, you're estimating. It takes time to do this, it takes time to use a system correctly because you want that the end result to come out where you need it to be. Information we got on the drawings. We all know that drawings, some of them are absolutely shocking. And you have to fill in the gaps. As an estimator, as a business owner, you get a drawing, it could be just a planning drawing, but yet the customer still wants a price and wants to get an accurate price. So you have to use your expertise to actually physically put that information in there and, 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 and use that program that, that, that you have bought that will help you fill in those gaps as well. So like I say, it's all about being confident with the system. So whatever system you do buy, you've got to be confident with it. You need to use it on a regular basis to be able to know the ins and outs of the program, to be able to get you your business the end results that, that you really, really want. That's about it. Yeah, I, I, I think that, that, that just to finish off there, um, the, the, uh, what I would say is use the right software with the right driving force, will give you an accurate estimate with the best chance of winning any work that, that is out there. You need to be winning at least 50% of the projects that you're priced up for. I know that it's very buoyant out there at the moment, but if you can get that accurate estimate and then win the work and work with your customer to, to, to refine that as you do the building itself. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Thanks, guys. Um... We've had some 
uh, really great questions posted in the box by from some of the members, but we'll save those till the end and get the panel all back together again to answer those questions in a moment. Because first of all, I'd like to invite Rob Clark to um, to switch his camera on so that you can see him, and then we'll hear from Rob about his uh, journey with estimating software. So I'll hand over to you now, Rob. Uh, thanks, Hayley. Um, so I just, I just wanted to start. Can you hear me well? Is that okay? Yeah. Anyone yep. hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Um, I just wanted to talk about my journey and why I actually started using the estimating software. Um, so like most of us, we're all using the what we call the pen and paper method. So um, you'll, you know, if like me, you'll carry, uh, you know, A1 drawings and you'll have heaps of them on your drive, uh, your dashboard. You'll be driving around and it just becomes an ass. Uh, administrative, uh, administrative mess on your dashboard. But anyway, um, I set out to look for some software because I was having issues that the jobs were coming in thick and fast, um, you know, and we couldn't price them quick enough. Uh, I was getting a little bit stressed out. Um, so I actually originally seek, went to seek a, a QS back in 2013 to 2014. So it was about that kind of time. Um, and we got the yellow pages out. It's like looking for and people say, well, back in 2014, why did you have the yellow pages? Because we had the internet. But again, people didn't have that mindset to uh, transition from the yellow pages that people were still using, um, which was paperback to the digital format, which was yell.com. So even we was going to yell.com looking for QS, um, it wasn't available, but it was available in, in the yellow pages. Um, so I set out looking for them and the feedback I was getting was, you know, um, they're retired or they're out of industry or some have passed on. Um, that happened quite a lot. So I knew I, I had a problem and I still needed to resolve it. And I went on the hunt for some software and I, I did a lot of research. Um, and I knew that I had to kind of pick the right software that fitted my company um, it was only small at the time, but it was growing quite fast. Um, you know, people were just constantly saying, "What well, can you do this? And, you know, and it's like all these drawings were coming through. It was like, great, this is this is really good. But obviously we didn't have the time. It was only me that was costing the jobs. And it was quite difficult. Um, and to be honest with you, the, the first thing when I, went, when I went to set off for purchasing some software, um, the initial thing was the cost. So a lot of people have put that in, in the the question, the, the poll at the beginning, um, the cost seems quite high. And you think, crikey, you know, how, how much is that going to cost? You know, it's, it's scandalous. But I, th I think once you get over that that initial mindset and you realise it becomes a tool, um, it, you know, it, it is an asset to your company. Um, and also you, you're kind of grappling with, you know, have I got the computer skills to kind of make this work? Well, again, you know, I'll echo what um, Andrew Wayne and Joanna said. They basically, you know, if you've got good support behind the company, then that shouldn't be an issue. You should be able to just phone that company direct and they should be able to guide you um, exactly right through through the process and, and how to use it. And the company that I picked in particular, it has a very, very good um, support base in terms of training as well. So you can go, go on their website, plenty of videos. Um, they talk you right through it um, and it becomes quite easily um quite easy to learn and you can pick it up quite quickly um i'm just reading my notes now so you, when you call up these companies as well um you know you don't have to be afraid of um asking a ridiculous question um because you know this these companies are there to help you they, they understand that this is a new process how builders are working um you know and the technology evolves all the time so you're never going to be a master of the software you always and you're going to have to kind of invest a bit of time into using it so it's like like anything when you buy a tool for your company you're going to have to kind of get to know the tool make sure it works for your business stuff like that um so yeah don't be afraid of that don't be afraid that you know you're making a commitment of thousands of pounds and you know you're going to be left with something that you can't use because i can assure you from my experience um it was a bit scary at first um, but it's paid off in the long run because literally we are doing things now um, that no other companies are doing in my area. So so that even the bigger players 
um, are still, you know, you go around, I can see what they're doing. I've read the quotes as well. That's another thing. Get, get to a chance to try and look at other company quotes and see what they're producing as well, because I can guarantee it'll just be a one page estimate that's probably not worth the, the paper it's written on. So uh, check your competition out as well, see what they're doing and compare your quotes as well. Um, I'm going to just talk about quickly how it's changed my lifestyle in the business. So we're in on to seventh year now um, of using this estimating software. And I can safely say that it's took quite a lot of stress and it's made us a lot of fi- a lot more efficient as well. Um, and we, like I say, we're working a lot differently to other companies. We're very stuck in the ways that you're still using paper, still using A1 scale uh, drawings, which is which is fine. That you know, it, it, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But if you wanted to kind of save your time, kind of save your save your outlay of printing and stuff like that, you know, you can get a, a decent bit of technology now. You can get your tablets and you can carry the information around with you on the job. You can problem solve instantly. Um, so it takes all that away. Um, and just to give you an example, a friend of my father's, so I started using this estimated software and a friend of my father's um, needed some help. He didn't have a QS um, and he had a, a project to tender a refurbishment. Uh, it was a £1.2 million project. I actually estimated it for him and they won the job. So there's another thing as well. You know, if you can go back in and, and look where what we was doing, we was doing really small projects and, and it kind of boosted my confidence a little bit that I could produce that kind of tender uh, for a bigger company. Um, I'm just going to finish off with some tips. Um, if you kind of uh, purchasing, so again, I'll echo what Joanna, Wayne, Andrew, you all said, uh, research company, if they've got a 14 to 28 day t- trial, take it, get familiar with it, um, see if it works for your business um, and, and take advantage of the of the free trials they're offering. Um, don't be frightened of taking the leap. Um, many companies are, are, are there to offer the support. Um, most, uh, most individuals who pick up software, they're, they're not going to be pros. You know, we're builders. We're, we're, we're programmed to kind of, our mindset is to kind of problem solve, be on site. So we're not going to be IT experts, but as you get to learn these products, you will become familiar with IT and it will actually put, put you out of your comfort zone to the point where you have to learn and it becomes enjoyable. Um, and don't be scared of the initial outlay as well because it's like anything, it's going to become the most important tool in your business. So don't don't think that you know it's a piece of software, it's going to do nothing for me. It is, it's going to pay for itself. You probably get a couple of jobs in and they'll actually pay for the product. So don't be scared of the initial outlay. Um, just to give you an, an idea as well. So I'll give an example. So we could spend like hours doing extensions, stuff like that. So recently um, I can get my estimating time down to, you know, a large extension. I can get that turned around in about an hour. So an hour can have a, a from analyzing the drawing to producing the estimate and have it back out to client within an hour. So that's quite impressive as well. Uh, I'll finish off by saying this as well. Um, if you're going to purchase this estimate of whatever product you go for, don't think it's going to be a magic calculator that's going to just, you know, you're going to punch a few digits in, it's going to be amazing. It's going to put, it's not going to do that. It's only as good as the information you feed it. So if you feed, if you're accurate with your, your surveys, if you're accurate with your, um, you know, your site visit, your measuring, stuff like that, then the cost will be accurate, provided you feed that information in that's accurate. Um, I'd like to finish by saying one thing, you know, these guys are the experts, it's their product, but if you ever have a question or you want to to ask me about my experience, by all means, contact me, I'll talk to you, um, and yeah, and I'll share my experience. So I'll hand over to Hayley again, a bit nervous at that time, so um, I'll hand back over to you and, and they can take some questions. All right, perfect. Thanks, Rob. All right, thanks. I'd like to say thank you to all the speakers today for uh, sticking to time, which has made my job very easy. So uh, it'd be great if all the speakers will put their cameras back on so that they're all on screen and then we can get some some questions from our members attending, So, uh, which I'll go through now. So 
just someone who's not asking you a question, but is just thanking you all for um, for the webinar. And it's been reassuring and really useful to them. So that's always nice feedback to get. Um, so one of the members has been asking about whether estimating software will actually integrate with other systems like accounting packages such as Xero for managing the invoicing as well. Don't know if anyone's got uh, any experience of using that kind of integration. Hiya, hey, Amy. Um, I can add um, a little bit um, on that from our perspective. Um, Age Brick Cell Building Software. We're not we're not an accounting software specialist. Um, there's you know there's many out there like Zero. Um, so from um, your um, your Estimator Express um, estimate, um, you can export an Excel file um, or a CSV file, um, and then hoover up that information, your estimated costs into um, into something like Zero. Um, and we also have um, a direct um, integration with another um, software product called Construction Industry Accounts, so you can do that um, as well. Um, but with, with you know with a good package where you've got a decent export, um, you can you can get that information out and into um, the accounting software. Okay, good to know. Thank you very much. Um, a couple of members have asked questions about uh, sort of the technology whether the software packages work on different devices like iPads. And one member's asked whether um, it works on a, works smoothly on a Mac. Is that one for you, Jo? Um, yeah, I can, I can help them, but I don't know if the, um, Andrew and Wayne, I feel like I'm uh, taking over the uh, questions. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, um, if I, I can go for it. Um, so um, our software is de it's designed um, for um, for a PC, um, but it will run on a Mac um, in a virtual Windows environment. Um, some people say that sometimes that slows things down a little bit. I, I haven't got an ex any experience of that. And um, we obviously um, have a, a development team that's done testing on that, so it should work um, okay. So yeah, um, we've got lots of users um, who are Mac. Um, as well and um, so we, we we say that we service the two but you do need um, to run a virtual windows environment on that mac um, okay. yeah i think we're saying there, there joanna we we use a uh, virtual pc um, that that's cloud-based so it can be used on any computer anywhere whether it's on a, a, an ipad or actually on your laptop or pc within your home you just got to have a, a decent internet connection and it will work, work within any uh, any source of computer yeah okay Thanks both. And Andy, you mentioned about labour rates varying widely across different parts of the country. And one of the members has asked about regional price differences. So does the software take into account, for example, difference in material costs between, say, Northern Ireland and London? Is that something that's built in? It is within, within the system that we use, absolutely. So we, we take the materials from, um, from local merchants and branches throughout the UK, even from Northern Ireland as well. But with regard to the labour rates, what we do is uh, we talk to the builders. The builders know their own labour rates. So you should be using your own labour rates, your own profit margins to be able to get to an end cost that you want to get to. A lot of people um, that we found, a lot of builders, they generally know the cost of what that project should be coming out at. They generally know the ballpark figures, but they're looking for backup. They're looking for ways to say, yeah, I was right. Yes, I know what I should be doing and the price that I should be putting in. But they're looking for things that, that's going to give them that confidence to be able to give that price to, to their clients. And I think that like, like Joe using software, like, like Joe's software, it gives them the confidence to go out there and price stuff. And yes, they may say, oh, well, I thought it was going to be 15000 and it comes out and for that. It just gives them the confidence to give that price to their customers with the local um, labour rates and local prices for the materials. Okay. So we've been hearing quite a lot from our members recently about shortages of various types of materials. Is Does that work its way into the software as well? Would it flag up? to the person who's producing the estimate that, you know, certain things are in short supply and there might be a long lead-in time for them. Is that part of it? It doesn't actually tell you in the system that there is in a short supply, but what the actual system does is when you produce your uh, material list and we've given it to one of our branches, then they can then flag up that and say, look, you must be looking at 16 weeks delivery for your roof tiles or, or whatever it may be. But what we do is, I think that, quite a lot of the builds are nervous about price increases. 
And that's understandable. We're in a, a world today where we don't know what's going to, the price is going to be next week, next month, or, or in three months' time. And as we all know that when we put a price in for a customer, that that price that we put in today, it may be nine months before we get that job. So you've got to be realistic with your pricing. You can't price it down to the finest tune and be really, um, let's say, to the penny with your materials because if you get to do that job and they have got up, well, then you're going to be out of pocket. So you've got to build in sort of some safeguard in there. So that's where we put in, like we say, contingency for the actual um, customer to see because at that point they can say, right, okay, then we'll put 15% in on the materials. It may or may not be used. It is there within the price, but it doesn't have to be used, and that's why we put it in for a contingency. It, it, the customer will be happy to get to the end of the job. There may have been no price increases, and they're not 15% off the price of the project. They'll be absolutely over the moon. But it also takes into account that, like we say, insulation is going up 10%, uh, bricks may be going up in the area, stuff like that. So it, it, it does try and take the ambiguity away from that. Okay. Hayley, might I um, kind of interject on that one, if I may? I know we're running out of time, um, but I was just going to say, um, you know, um, some, some software products such as ours, they do have an inflation um, factor in there. So if your job is going to start, you know, you'll say you are really busy right now because loads of firms that we're talking to, they are flat out right now. You know, we get that. So they're putting in for jobs for next year. Um, and so what we're doing is we, we will run an inflation figure across that um, the whole of the next nine months until you start and then inflation all the way through that project. So if you're not starting for nine months and then it's a nine month project, you've got 18 months worth of inflation to be thinking about. So um, the software will roll that up and make sure that that, that inflation, uh, that inflated figure is is. Um, you know, is, is ready for your quotation. So it's, it's worth thinking about that as well, because, you know, there is a lot of uh, you know, price inflation, materials and labour. I mean, we, we've we recently done an update for the software and there's, there's you know, there's timber is so, so, um, so, so um, all over the place, insulation, UPVC, everything. So you need to have obviously accurate pricing and also think about inflation for these further out projects. Um, yeah. And a good tool will do that for you. Really important, isn't it? Because to avoid nasty surprises for the builder and their client as well at the end of the yes. project. So, yeah. yeah, I would also add that, um, and I know that the FNB have their, their own contracts. I'm not quite sure how it's handled, but um, um, obviously being fair to the consumer and the builder, because obviously it's challenging times for the builder, um, not committing to a price until perhaps 90 days before the project is due to start. So putting in the quote um, today, um, but with the caveat that we will reconfirm the price um, you know, within 90 days or so of the project starting and giving the, the consumer the fair notice, but also protecting the builder to a degree. So our building contracts tool will, will help help produce that for them to make sure that they're not kind of hanging themselves by being successful and taking on a job <laughs> that far out. Yeah, um, good point. Um, we've had another question in from Ralph, who's asking about whether either of your software packages have... Um, the ability to input costs for specialist bespoke items, such as an oak truss. Um, is that something that can be accommodated? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, things like um, trusses um, are, uh, are, are prices within our software to be defined to make sure that you do get the right price in there, because obviously you are going to get a quote um, from, um, from a from a.